Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Isus Christu. Brothers and sisters, to all of the friends and faithful of St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy who are joining us from various places in our best eparchy, we greet you today in this first virtual Oliparchial event celebrating unity with gratitude. My name is Father Pablo Papo, and it's my great honor to serve you as a master of ceremonies on this virtual bank. And while we certainly miss the opportunity to connect with everyone in person as a result of this ongoing pandemic, we are especially grateful for the opportunity to have this virtual encounter with all of you, no matter how far you may be. Also, since it is our first ever Park Hill virtual event, there might be some unforeseen technical difficulties and issues. If this were to happen, I ask for your patience and understand. So what is this virtual banquet? Unfortunately, it won't offer us any of the delicious foods we usually share at our parish banquets, but it does open up doors to possibilities to virtually meet or unite with one another over internet and to learn from one another. I remember once his beatitude patriarch Lubomir visited the seminary I was studying, and he was asked to share some words of wisdom with the seminarians. At that time, we had various groups in the seminary, various student groups. We had Roman Catholic seminarians, we have Ukrainian Catholic seminarians, we had Franciscan friars, other religious. And so his beatitude thought for a moment and said, the best advice I can give you right now is to use your time while being together in the seminary in order to learn from one another. This opportunity to get to know one another better will eliminate fear and anxiety that you might possibly have about others and will open up the doors to new and countless opportunities. Similarly with us today, present here at this virtual banquet, we have an amazing opportunity to get to know one another better, to learn about one another, to learn from one another. With this virtual encounter, we're opening the doors to the multitude of countless possibilities. So let's get it started. And at this time, before we proceed even further, I would like to ask our effort, Bishop Benedict, to lead us in prayer and share some words of wisdom as well. Sit down, please, everybody. Це для нас справді є дуже доброю нагодою побути разом. Це щось вперше. Ми будемо мати свої якісь успіхи, якісь свої невдачі, але дуже важливо, що ми починаємо зустрічатися разом. Ми вже багато разів зустрічалися як священники, тепер ми хочемо, щоб наші миріани долучилися до нас, щоб ми побачили, яка багата наша іпархія, як Бог по-різному це творить. Це добра нагода, коли ми побудемо разом, коли ми поділимо своїм досвідом, коли ми просто побачимо один одного. It's impossible for us to live alone. We need one another. When we see our life, we always have relatives, friends, somebody who always support us. At the same time, we support somebody else because God gives uh, everybody in my life. It's very important when we support, we understand it, we, our parish, we are not alone this year. Really, we are far away, but we need support. Some parish has some experience, another parish has another experience, but when we, were, when we work together in unity, we will do many good things for our faithful, for 
our parishes in far of upper he god bless all of you thank you excellency there is one more thing i have to share with all of you on september 5th bishop benedict celebrated 10th anniversary of his Episcopal ordination. What a significant milestone. Thus, on behalf of all clergy and faithful in Nicola Eparchy, we congratulate you, Your Excellency, with this anniversary, and thank you for your guidance, care, and support. It's an extremely challenging task you have embarked on. In this day and time, it's not easy to be a bishop. And especially, it's not easy to be a bishop of St. Nicholas, Africa. May God continue to grant you plenty of wisdom to make difficult but right decisions. Plenty of patience to deal with us all, especially clergy, and strength to lead those entrusted to you as one flock toward God. Axios. Axios. Please make yourself comfortable, perhaps some food and some wine might help. And in the meantime, allow me to share some interesting facts about our eparchy that you might or might have not already known. St. Nicholas eparchy is the biggest by territory eparchy, or diocese as some call it. It's the biggest in the world. It stretches from Michigan all the way west to Hawaii and from Michigan south to Louisiana and Texas. At the same time, as large as it is in the territory, it's not as populous in parishes. We only have 43 parishes and missions that are serving people in 16 states. Some states like Illinois, Michigan, and California have numerous parishes. Some have one or two, like Minnesota, Oregon, or Texas, and some of the states have none. The eparchy was established in 1961 when it split from Philadelphia Arch Eparchy, and since that time, it has faithfully served many generations of the faithful. Since our eparchy is so vast and parishes are so spread out from one another, it has always been a challenge for people of, from various corners of the eparchy to get together, to have this sense of unity. Oftentimes, it feels like we have been operating as individual islands. And thus, one of the goals of this virtual encounter, as I have mentioned already, is to unite us all, to make us realize better we are one family, we are one eparchy. What a marvelous opportunity this is. Additionally, who, if not your own family, would help you in the times of need? And today, one of our parochial family members, one of our parishes, St. John the Baptizer Parish in San Diego, California, is in such their need as they embark on a major project of building a brand new church. The second goal of today's encounter is also to help one of our own by raising some funds, by sharing the gift of treasure and helping that community to pray and worship God in their own church. What a great opportunity to be part of something big, something as big as building the new church. And who knows, maybe one day, someday, someday in future, you or your children will visit San Diego and will stop by that church and they will be able to say, I was part of that whole building project. I helped to build that church. This is my church. 
Thus, if you would like to support St. John the Baptizer community, please, please visit the Park Hill website, www.esn-cc.org. And you can donate electronically. Please make sure to put an additional line comments, St. Diego Parish. Also, you can send a check to St. Nicholas Eparchy, 2245 West Rice Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60622. Also, please make sure to place in memo a line saying for San Diego Parish. I thank you in advance for your tremendous generosity and support. And now, without further ado, please allow me to introduce St. John the Baptizer Parish, their priest, Father Yuri Sass, and their church community. Please. Hello everybody, my name is Fazil Yuri, I am administrator of the parish of St. John the Baptist Church in San Diego. This year, our community is celebrating its 60th anniversary from the establishment of our parish. Every generation before us has tried to improve the conditions of our church, and now every single one of us has a unique opportunity to participate in building our new church and spiritual cultural center where we are going to pray God, raise and teach our children, introduce people of different nationalities to our faith, traditions, culture and language. We have purchased the land already. It is the land where we are going to build our future temple. We finish all the city and government required permits, but for now, Sunday services to God and people are taking place in one of our parishioners' houses garden. My kindly regarded brothers and priests, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and people of good will, in this uneasy time, I ask you, please help fulfill the dream of many generations. And I assure you that the name of each donor will be prayed for while our church stands. May the heavenly Father reward you for your generosity and kindness. Українській громаді сан Дієго потрібна церква. І нам важливо слухати Слово Боже і творити спільноту, де б зберігалися українські традиції та мови. Церква допоможе нам виховувати наших дітей в дусі християнської віри, Help us on our path to new beginnings in preserving our sacred beliefs, teachings, cultures, and all else we hold dearly in our hearts. Слава Ісусу Христу, ми будуємо в церкву Сан Дієго, щоб нести на західному побережжі Сполучених Штатів Слово Боже українською мовою, Слово Боже англійською мовою, взагалі Слово Боже між людьми. Слово церква переводиться з греческого як собрання призваних. И как мы видим, в Сан-Диего очень много призванных людей, которые готовы приходить и молиться в храм. Украинцев, русских, молдаван, белорусов, православных, католиков, христиан. Но нет храма как такового. Поэтому мы решили поддержать эту инициативу по постройке храма Божьего. И надеюсь, что ее поддержите вы. Церква – это часть нашего жизни. Церква – это часть нашей души. И церква нам нужна для того, чтобы это часть Бога. 
ми стараємося за всіма силами побудувати тут і зберегти українську спільноту тут в Сан-Дієго. Ми є динамична спільноти. I moved to San Diego with my family in 1973 and uh, we had a church on Bonona, we had a church in La Mesa and we need this church right now. We are dynamic. Many of you may know Balboa Park in San Diego. We are lucky that there is a house of Ukraine in Balboa Park. So we try to tell everything that's going on that's Ukrainian to share it with the community. Thank you. I'd love to see our church continue here in San Diego for the many future families and especially the children so they too can experience our Lord's love and the support of those in a community such as St. John the Baptizer. My parents and grandparents helped found St. John the Baptizer 60 years ago here in San Diego. It's been a home for them, it's a home for me, it's a home now for my fiance and we hope with this project we'll have a spiritual home for the next 60 years. It'll be a church and a hall, a cultural, a civic, a spiritual center where people can come from all around the county, worship Jesus Christ, gather together, make friends, acquaintances, and come together each week as a family in Christ. We invite you to join us on this journey. We thank you in advance. We hope to see you here in San Diego soon in our new church. We have been without uh, a building uh, of our own to worship for a few years, and it's been very difficult for us. So we are really uh, hoping that we can receive some help in order for us to be able to have a building of our own. So we just ask you to please consider this. Thank you. У нас українців Сан Дієго такого притулку на даний час немає, але ми хочемо того Божого дому, тому того храму Господнього для того, щоб наші діти, нове покоління вірили і мали місце, куди приходити до щоб звертатися до Бога. Чому ми будуємо церкву? Тому що церква це є наша спільнота. Чому ми будуємо церкву? Тому що це є єдність з Господом. Чому ми будуємо церкву? Тому що це частинка України на землі Америки. Слава Ісусу Христу! With God's help, your prayers and financial help, I believe we will build a church. We already have collected over $100,000 and your help is appreciated. No handoff, so I assume it's my turn. Slava Jesusu Christu. Slava Divika Boho. Glory to Jesus Christ. my name is uh, Zachary Wochak, I'm the president of St. Andrew's Ukrainian Greek Catholic Parish in Sacramento, California. <coughs> It's my pleasure being here today. Thank uh, you. My name is uh, Zachary Wolchak. Oh. Can you hear me without an echo? Yes. On June 3rd, 1984, Ukrainians established the parish of St. Andrew Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in Sacramento, the capital of California. Our first pastor was Father Andrei Mikita. Others who were the founders of our parish include Mr. Yuri, Kachmar Wolchak, Rubliki families. <clears throat> Through the years, uh, our parish was somewhat nomadic, seeking Roman Catholic parishes that would offer their churches to allow our services. The Diocese of Sacramento is very helpful during these formative years. Every first Sunday of the month at 5 p.m., the rector of Immaculate Conception Church in San Francisco came to Sacramento to conduct services. As the number of new Ukrainian immigrants increased and new parishioners began to arrive, there was an urgent need for a pastor who could meet the needs of parishioners to pray in their native language. In the early years, the parish was served by Father Volodymyr Petru, 
who conducted Ukrainian language services and began working with the growing number of children in the parish. After Father Vladimir was reassigned, Father Rubliki served the parish for a period of time until Father Avramenko was assigned to St. Andrew, followed by Father Petra Diachok. So you see we've had quite a few ministries um, over the years, early years. In 2006, Father Petro Kozar was assigned to St. Andrew Parish, and Father Diachok transitioned to San Francisco, where he still remains. In the early 2000s, St. Andrew had been holding services in the former St. Philip's Byzantine Rite facility for several years. At that time, the property had been purchased by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Sacramento, they allowed us to use that uh, facility rent-free. In 2008, the lay member board of the directors of the Sacramento Diocese decided to begin charging us rent. A group of parishioners with Father Petro approached the Roman Catholic Diocese and offered to purchase the entire property, consisting of a house for the use of our priest, a converted garage that still serves as our chapel, and an adjacent rental property. Uh, the attendance pre has been around 70, 70 parishioners. Uh, Christmas and Easter, of course, as you can imagine, can bring the total to 150 or more, with uh, the most uh, most of the folks standing outside to listen to the service. The entire property was purchased for $253,000, with the Sacramento Diocese holding the 30-year mortgage at 0% interest. Twelve years later, Father Petro Cazar remains as our longest tenured pastor, and the balance on our mortgage is now $86,000. As for the future, parishioners have actively engaged in developing plans and seeking approvals to proceed with replacing the existing chapel with a new structure. We have also renovated the parish house for our priest and built a large parish meeting room to host pre-COVID Sunday luncheons and special events. Our sisterhood and women's prayer group are very active in managing all these events, while the men of our parish donate their time and skills to all the renovations. Olya Harasimenko, well-known Badurist from Ukraine, has been a parishioner for quite some time uh, and has been a driving force in working with the youth of our parish, establishing choral and Bandurist ensembles and managing many special events. As with many other parishes, if not all of our parishes, contributions in 2020 have decreased due to COVID, and we are actively seeking donations to pay down a mortgage, support our ongoing operations, and our building fund. We uh, thank you very much for giving us this, uh, this opportunity to introduce you to St. Andrews. Uh, we're very excited by the future and where we are today. You can learn more about us at www.ukrainianparish.com. Thank you. I would like to present our next uh, parish, which is uh, St. Michael's Parish, which I understand is actually in Grand Rapids, not Detroit and uh, Father uh, Roman Fetcher. What is the Jesus Christ? The liturgy. Dear Bishop Benedict, dear fathers, dear our beloved parishioners, um, I am administrator in St. Michael in Grand Rapids, Michigan, only for one and a half year. And uh, I want to ask my, our brother in Christ, Mr. Jin Hanka, introduce better this parish because he is in this parish from the beginning. Please, Mr. Jin. Good afternoon, at all. Nice to see you, everyone on the screen. Uh, my name is Eugene Hanka. I've been in this parish since 1957. Our parish was started in 1949. We purchased the present building that we occupy in 1950. It was remodeled and subsequently christened as a Catholic church and is still in use today. 
Our building was built in the late 1800s. It was one of these corner uh, frame type churches without any off street parking, rather humble in appearance, but has sufficed for our needs. It would be nice to have something grander, but uh, circumstances have not permitted that. Thank goodness that in our forming years, the founders were very uh, proactive in putting on a good number of uh, social events, picnics, dinners, different types of sales, and a variety of other events that uh, garnered quite a bit of uh, funds, which were put aside, and that has really helped us out in the recent uh, past in our lean years. Over time, we have had about 15 approximately pastors assigned to us, some with as little uh, assignment time as one year, others have been here for quite some time. Our longest uh, tenure priest has been Father Michael Blish who arrived in 2004 and was medically retired in 2017. He now resides in the Grand Rapids area as a retired individual. Uh, going forward, we have had many uh, different events that took place in our parish. Ladies' Altar Society was strong. All these different uh, events that our uh, prisoners were able to put on with the help of local uh, Roman Catholics. Uh, everyone was quite well wired with the local community, so whenever we put on an event, it was well attended. Those events, unfortunately, are behind us now as the founders have all passed on. Unfortunately, I have to admit that I am one of the few of my age that was able to stay put and remain with the parish. Those many others that grew up in the parish have chosen to otherwise. They thought this was something that their parents brought over from the old country that replicated what they had there. And they were more uh, modern-minded American citizens and married local people and did not want to affiliate with something that was uh, rather foreign appearing to them. But with that reality in mind, we have had a good number of Roman Catholic folks, especially after Vatican II, that did affiliate with us over time. And those are the folks that helped sustain us in the ensuing years to this day. Our present parish has about 42 families in it. Unfortunately, about half of those are single member households, of which I am one also. But better than two thirds of that family are non Ukrainians. We only have myself and maybe three others that are of Ukrainian stock, and two recently arrived Ukrainian families one that transferred from New York to here, another one that came from Ukraine itself but the rest of our family fabric is made up with local folks. And that is the some substance that really is a base of our support. Looking forward, we're grateful that our FRP has moved forward with our roof repair as something that's much needed. That should be starting weather permitting in the next few weeks. We also are looking at something that is staring us in the face in the not too distant future. Our foundation is stone that has to be shored up and uh, made more appropriate so it'll hold up over time. And also our heating system and air conditioner are rather antiquated from 1991. So far so good, but not the distant future that is probably going to go out. So we have that as a challenge to look forward to. So we have our challenges here for now. Things are status quo and looking fairly good. But going forward, we do have things that we have to address that are a bit more than we care to uh, admit. So that is pretty much kind of the lump sum of who we are and what we are doing. You probably have seen some of the photos that Father Fetchick has presented to you. to give us an idea of who we are and what our physical uh, layout is like. I do want to uh, thank you for the attention for this opportunity and uh, bless you. I welcome our next parish, which is the Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Dearborn Heights, which our capable Father Voldemort Petri, who is our Dean, is the pastoral. Thank you. Glory be to Jesus Christ, Father Jesus Christ. Are you able Holy to hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Dear Bishop um, and priest and all faithful, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, thank you for this opportunity because it is given, is a gratitude we that just get together to celebrate as a big, big family. But we know <clears throat> about our parish, it's a, we celebrate recently. Uh, 50 anniversary of our parish, and um, uh, we uh, that one, how to say, was began from the beginning. Where we were, we uh, were as a mission 
of St. John the Baptist Church because uh, thanks to wisdom of Father Monsignor uh, Mikhail Bokhnevich, he has tried to establish on the west of Metro Detroit, New Parish, uh, and he succeeded, and that parish was um, um, blessed in um, 1963 and was open, and with, uh, we remember Bishop Habro, he was the first bishop in who came to this parish and um, blessed this parish uh, and, uh, since that time. Uh, we have a, uh, only one priest who served before me. It was Father John Lazar. He <clears throat> was the first priest who was assigned to this parish. It was the, uh, not just so big parish, but around 250, 300 uh, members of the parish. Uh, they were so active, golf club and uh, seniors club and also society, and they were working with them mm, uh, uh, because in this area we have uh, six more parishes right now. Uh, they have a picnic together, festival together was so right, but unfortunately with the years, uh, mixes marriages, moved to different areas, you know the story, and the parishes, uh, now we are around uh, 67, 67 families, and maybe members is 82, 85, independent. Uh, as, as usually we <clears throat> have uh, two masses, uh, one in, in Ukrainian and English. Uh, we have uh, uh, some people uh, who belong to the Spanish different et ethnic group. We don't have a lot of Ukrainian, uh, immigrants from Ukraine because we live in this area, west part of Metro Detroit, and most of our Ukrainian immigrants live on the <coughs> in the Warren area, Hemtramck and uh, north of the uh, Metro Detroit. But we have a few, we have uh, some uh, catechetical classes, uh, even uh, best uh, time what we have, I mean, uh, members, uh, uh, we have a three, uh, four teachers, catechetical teachers. We had eight children, but now we have uh, only three children. We have uh, some, uh, maybe uh, around family, three, four family with uh, uh, children, and most of our parishioners is the uh, old parishioners, unfortunately. And um, <clears throat> we struggle with this because, for example, in the last year we uh, we buried 16, 16 parishioners, 19 uh, in, in 2019, and uh, we got some new parishioners, but doesn't uh, change a lot. We have uh, some activities. We have a uh, maintenance team who support the church because, as you mentioned. Um, uh, that was a kind of, uh, you know, um, problem with the boilers and all of the stuff, but we have a good people who can fix it and we just save the money. We make some renewation, uh, we, we paint the church and we put the, um, we renew the parking lot, we renew the sum around the church, but we still struggle um, <clears throat> because uh, we have to fix our, our roof a church roof, it's project around $80,000 or so. And we don't know how to do this yet, but we try to uh, to work out uh, with this. And um, um, what else? And I would like to say uh, our personnel could get together today, but they are uh, looking on us and, and uh, through the website, the Nicholas website. And I would like to say, uh, even those challenges, what we have, we're still hopeful that we can uh, do better uh, and as much as we, as we can. And please say prayer for our Father Thomas. Uh, we have an assistant priest here. He was got a little bit sick, and if you will pray for him, thank you so much, and may God bless you all.
Слава Ісусу Христу! Слава Новіки! Glory to Jesus Christ! Glory to Him forever! My name is Pastor Yuri, I am the administrator uh, in the parish of St. John the Baptist in San Diego. Your Excellency Bishop Benedict, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you had the opportunity to, to meet our parishioners during this uh, video. Unfortunately, we haven't church like temple, we haven't rectory, but we have a lot of good people who have so deep faith and who have wishes to build this community and build our future temple. We have land, we bought this land uh, for cash. We almost finished all uh, permits, but uh, for the beginning, we need to collect $250 at, uh, for $150,000. At this moment, we already, even since during an easy time, we have collected $70,000. During the pandemic, we are serving in different places. I have served first time in my apartment. And even in, uh, in, on the Easter, I had in my apartment, small two bedroom, two bathroom, we had almost 20, uh, 20 people. Now we are serving in the garden of our, one of our parishioners. It's not easy even for me, like for priests, because sometimes we have, we can have 100 degrees. Uh, when are you preaching or serving? somebody your neighbors can uh, cut in grass or cut in tree but the most hardly is for our people they are driving sometimes 50 70 miles one way to have liturgy but every sunday even today we have we had approximately more than 50 people with young children and even this, during in difficult time pandemic our parishes our parishes our parish is grow up at this point, I ask you, please, just help us to begin. After, we will continue by, myself, by ourselves, but now we need your help. May God bless you. May God bless all par parishes of our uh, eparchy for your generosity and kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentations. And I will just start uh, with Father Yuri Sass and his beautiful uh, community, church community. Thank you so much for the informative and great presentation for your video that you put together. It's definitely not easy. It's very hard, but I have no doubt whatsoever that with God's help and your continuous zeal, there will be a new church in no time. So thank you so much for your commitment, for your dedication, and for your hard work. Once again, to all those who listen to us today, you have an opportunity to support St. John the Baptizer community and help them to build their new church. You can do it electronically by visiting a Park Hill website, www.esn-cc.org, or you can uh, write a check uh, to St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Eparchy, 2245 West Rice Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60622. Thank you. Thank you for your generous support. And I just received a little update that so far, as of now, we already collected close to $1,300 for St. John the Baptizer community. Thank you once again. Going back to the other three parishes, as you know, as you heard before, our eparchy is very vast. And we started with Sacramento Parish in California and we finished with Dearborn Heights in Michigan. Yesterday, just out of curiosity, I Googled what's the distance between those parishes. And it's actually 2,307 miles or 34 hour drive, nonstop drive from Sacramento to Dearborn Heights. Now, if you like to drive like we do here in Texas fast, you might make it in 30 hours, but still it's a long drive. And just 
gives you a little glimpse of what it takes sometimes to get from one parish to another. So thank you so much, all those presenters, for your information and uh, for your presentations. Moving along now, if you are involved in the administration of the parish, you know there is continuous communication between a parochial chancery and parochial office. Whether it's a memo from bishop, information about new property insurance, advertisement of the parochial capital campaign, and many other questions, concerns, answers, whatever it might be, there is always a person behind it. There is always someone working on the project, making sure that we are all on the same page and that we are all on, in the right communication. Thus, next presenter, I would like to ask to share a little bit about Chancery is Maria Kokor, and she will talk to us about the scenes. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you for introducing me. I'm Maria Kokor, and I am the director of uh, uh, Stewardship and Development Office in St. Nicholas, Aberkey. I'm very happy to see all of you, and uh, I'm even more happy that uh, a lot of our parishioners have this chance to uh, watch us live uh, on Facebook. So if you haven't done so, please uh, go to our uh, Facebook page, St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Aberkey, and watch us live. Yes, indeed. Um, the uh, it's always a question: uh, What is the aparchy? You know, a lot of people think that the aparchy is something abstract, or it's something uh, that uh, you know it's hard to define. It's yes and no. Uh, aparchy is is all of us. It's the parishes, the parishes that we are just meeting right now with you, and it's also the people. The people who are doing uh, and have done so far, for, so, who have uh, done so many things for for the uh, for the upper key. Today, I would like to introduce the Park Hill office and uh, uh, the upper key behind the scenes. We have prepared a little presentation for all of you, just to uh, for you to meet with our wonderful staff and uh, with the people who are doing so much for all these causes and the missions that uh, our Aperkey is heading right now. Okay, so St. Nicholas, Ukrainian Catholic Aperkey behind the scenes. Um, the reception. So this is the first, these are the first people that you meet whenever you come to our office. And uh, um, I would like to introduce uh, our uh, um, Anna Burton, who is not only the face of the Aperkey, but also the voice of the Aperkey. Whoever calls the, uh, the Aperkey will hear her voice first. She is a very nice and loving and generous person, and also she likes making uh, shrimp mousse once a month. So if you, uh, if you would like to get one, just uh, she, she's accepting orders. Also, you can uh, uh, please meet uh, Lesa Poltan, who is our full-time volunteer. We do have such positions in our Aperkey. Uh, she is a great organizer and uh, she is currently helping us with uh, our archives. And uh, well, she has found a lot of interesting staff. Maybe one day we'll share it with you. <laughs> the administrative office. <laughs> well, I think everybody knows what administration means. But the administrative office is not only about managing day-to-day -day operations, uh, handling correspondence, bookkeeping, and whatnot, but also it's the glue of our Barkel office. Without these two lovely ladies, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Uh, so please meet uh, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis Muren Zaparanyuk, who is the as she put it, uh, caretaker of the dead, but in plain English, that means that she is the uh, responsible first person for St. Nicholas uh, um, yeah. Cemetery. She knows everything about the cemetery. Um, so maybe, <laughs> well, I won't joke about that. All right. Uh, uh, some of her special skills is baking prospora. Uh, also, please meet uh, Christina Kosic, who is a great dog lover, who, um, who is a very, 
a nice, a very generous and a big hearted person. And she is also a cantor. Not only that she's a business administrator, but she's also a wonderful cantor. And if you watch uh, uh, the um, liturgies, um, the weekly liturgies uh, on our uh, Facebook page, uh, you, you hear her voice every single day. So kudos for, to her for, for this cantoring uh, job. The next uh, office, uh, is the financial department. I would say this is uh, a heavy artillery and decision making in our offices. Uh, <clears throat> and here uh, you will see uh, two people who are in charge of our finances. Uh, of course, the first person I would like to introduce is Anna Shalava, who is our financial manager, but also financial guru. She is, uh, you see her, that smile on her face, that means that everything is balanced on her, uh, on our financial statements. Um, she has special skills and given the skills like archery and shooting, I wouldn't risk getting on her bad side. So uh, the next person is uh, Father Volodymyr Pushkin, who is, also, who is the econom, uh, or I would say in Ukrainian, and uh, he is very uh, detail oriented, very serious, as you can see uh, in this picture, and uh, very reliable. And one of his special skills is extreme driving. So if for some reason you lack adrenaline in your life, yeah. so you're always welcome to go and ride with Father uh, uh, Volodymyr for free and uh, to get an extra dosage of adrenaline. Um, and don't thank me. Uh, here, we are coming to two other wonderful people, uh, priests, who are not actually representing any <laughs> Um, department, but they are a great spiritual and technical support mm -hmm. blended together. I would like to um, say a few words about Father Roman Bobasuk, who, uh, thanks to whom uh, we have this meeting today, uh, saying thanks to his um, technical knowledge and uh, you know and his interests uh, in, in uh, you know in Zoom and in and all these online technologies, we we are able to meet together, uh, today together. Uh, uh, well, he is, he defined his position as a jack of all trades. I think we, in our eparchy, eparchial office, we are more or less all jacks uh, of all trades, jacks of all trades, but uh, nevertheless, he is a wonderful person and, uh, uh, you know, if, if you have any troubles or any of us has any troubles with uh, technology, we always come and ask for his help. Also, please meet Father Serhii Kovacuk, who is a chancellor and also a jack of all trades, uh, who is very, he is actually the boss in the office, but he is a very approachable boss with a good sense of humor, very joyful and very accommodating. Well, and now you humble servants, Maria Kokor and Oksana Kromley, we are, uh, we represent the Stewardship and Development Office. Uh, well, I can't tell, you know, it's hard to tell something nice and uh, humorous uh, about myself, but um, uh, I just, yeah, I do a lot of uh, daily to-do lists and never finish them. That's one of the things that I do. <laughs> but also, uh, we are trying, well, you are receiving all this communication from me every uh, every time uh, uh, you, uh, I mean, maybe not all the parishioners, but the priests receive communication regarding the capital campaign. So we are in charge of fundraising. Um, we also have uh, Oksana Kromi on board, who is our database administrator. And uh, thanks to her, all our um, records are uh, kept up to date. Uh, also, like I mentioned before, we have uh, full-time volunteers. Uh, Oleg uh, John Skubiak and Father Mikola Boryadnik. Without these people, uh, we wouldn't have done what we have for, for today. And we are really grateful that they are with us every time, whenever we need any help or any, um, you know, spiritual support too. So they are always with us with their uh, pieces of advice, with their recommendations, with their knowledge. So uh, we are really grateful to these wonderful people who are helping us. 
And uh, by the way, uh, if you would like to receive one of these volunteering positions, full-time volunteering positions, you, uh, you must contact our office. Don't miss your chance. <laughs> and the last one, of course, the last person and the first person is our Benedict, uh, Bishop Benedict Alexi Chuk, who is uh, um, our uh, Vladika, AKA, or AKA the boss. Uh, he is uh, very amiable, open to new things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he accepts them. Uh, he's very good at delegating responsibilities, but motivating at the same time. And um, thanks to him, we uh, know where we are moving and what we want to do uh, with the Eparchy. And he is really our uh, spiritual rock. He is motivating us and helping us uh, every day in every way he can. Uh, and um, I would like to thank everybody, all the staff, they are sitting behind me, if you can see me, if you can see them, uh, for all this great, work that they have been doing for the Eparchy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pani Maria. Very informative and good to know that we have so many great people working in our chancery in the cathedral office. I know personally, it takes a lot to make sure that all the operations run smoothly. So I thank you for that. Having heard about our chancery and cathedral staff, I would like to invite parishes that are actually right there in the Chicago area, at the very heart of our eparchy, including our mother church, the oldest church in the eparchy, our St. Nicholas Cathedral. So we'll start with St. Nicholas Cathedral, followed by St. Vladimir and Olha, Chicago, Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Palos Park, St. Joseph the Betrothed, Chicago, the Conception of Immaculate Mother of God, Palatine. Please, the floor is all yours. Okay. Uh, glory be to Jesus Christ. It's really uh, nice to be here uh, with all friends, and especially in this uh, renovated uh, apartment of our uh, Bishop Benedict. And I would like to say uh, thank you to everybody who helped us to renovate it, uh, the building of our rectory and this apartment, especially to Father Volodymyr. Uh, thank you really very much for your support. Uh, here we have uh, our friends, uh, we have uh, our representatives uh, of our parish, uh, we have uh, some members of uh, our pastoral uh, council, also uh, of our new communities. Uh, we have a few new communities. We have uh, Mariska Druzhena, we have uh, Mothers in uh, Prayer, we have Charismatic uh, Community. We also have other uh, very nice, really, uh, communities, but it's impossible just to invite all of all the representatives because it's, it's not, it's hard time. But uh, just half minutes, uh, I would like to as a priest, uh, as a pastor here, uh, I would like to say thank you to Father uh, Roman and also to Father Vladimir that uh, from the beginning helped us uh, to, uh, to renew uh, our parochial uh, life. Uh, the most important question, not about walls or roofs, the most important question is about community. Uh, and I think God we have uh, this community and it's, it's this co our community, cathedral community is growing up. Uh, other question uh, is very important for myself and for everybody. What does it mean to be cathedral? What does it mean really? Because from one point of view, we are, uh, we are parish, but from another point, we are cathedral. What, what does it mean? And I found uh, the answer that cathedral as a mother, mother church in eparchy this is church and communities that is open for everybody sometimes some people comes and they ask me father can we come to pray with you uh, to cathedral but we belong to other parish and i said every time okay you belong to other parish 
And it's very important that you will support your parish because you belong to this community. But uh, cathedral is in like mother for every, for all eparchy. So uh, you really can participate and you're welcome uh, to be uh, in cathedral to pray with us, to feel this unity in this church, uh, this unity of all our eparchy. And we as a community, pastoral, as a parish, we welcome everybody. Also, I would like to say, uh, to invite uh, Pani Lesa just to say a few words about our really interesting history and about our community. Glory be to Jesus Christ, Lama Jesus Christ. Um, my name is Lasha Paltzan. I am a lifelong parishioner of St. Nicholas Cathedral Parish. I was born in Chicago, raised right around the corner, basically, from the cathedral. So I have been around, and they asked me to speak about the cathedral. If, um, if you really want to go through the entire history of the uh, church, parish, cathedral, um, it, it would take forever. It's 114 years old now. The structure itself is about 101 years old. Um, many of your parishes, uh, maybe not on the West Coast, but a lot of the ones in the Midwest were probably started approximately by the immigrants that first came here from Ukraine uh, about the same time. Um, but in 1906, a small group of immigrants here from Galicia or areas around there um, got together and decided to buy a little wooden church because they wanted to have the Byzantine rite. They wanted something from their homeland. And they continued with this, but they kept growing. So they decided, well, let's buy some property. And there was no property, just plots of land. And in 1912, they bought some where the cathedral stands now. In 1913, they uh, blessed the cornerstone. They actually had the first liturgy in two years, in 1915. But of course, it took many more years to paint the inside and adorn it in the Byzantine style. Um, basically, the parish just kept growing because the immigrants had families. Some had moved on. Some were moving west. Okay. Um, after a while, they decided, well, let me find my notes. <laughs> Um, they decided they needed to teach the children. And the Ritna Shkola, or a Ukrainian school, started. And the first time it was just part-time. And then later the Sisters of Basil came and took over the teaching. Um, by uh, nine, 1932, Great Depression hit them. The, the cathedral was in, in dire need of money. Also, um, the Brazilian father took, uh, fathers came and took over, or it was entrusted to, to them, and they helped the cathedral, or at the time it was still a church, um, to get rid of some of this debt that they had. And to keep the, the parish going, they said, well, we need a full-time school. So in 1935, we have the old school was built, what we call the old school. Um, later on, everything was developing, and then we had another wave of immigrants. The second wave of immigrants came right after World War II. Um, maybe some of your parents did at that time, and they had marriages happening at the church. They had a lot of baptisms shortly after and decided that, well, we need another school. So when I was going to St. Nicholas School, we had, uh, they had built a school in 1954, a new school, as we call it, and it housed almost 1,200 students. 
Of course, it dwindled down after that, but that immigration was very strong. So through the years, um, our immigrants were the ones that wanted our churches. And this was going on throughout the West, I think, also as people were migrating for jobs and whatnot, they were opening up small parishes. Uh, we were in the beginning a small parish. And finally, I think in 1961, they decided there were quite a few parishes out there that they formed an eparchy. And we had our first bishop, Bishop Cabral. Uh, well, we had, we're on our fifth bishop now. Uh, we had Bishop um, Lototsky, Bishop Bichar, Bishop Semenak, and now Bishop Benedict. Why did I talk about all this immigration? Because it keeps going. And we had a third wave and a fourth wave. And the fourth wave is really a really bigger wave than the third wave was. And it's an important wave because this is the future of our church. This wave of immigrants have, have begun to assimilate. They've come to our churches. They're spreading out just like my parents' group had spread out all over the United States. So um, immigration kind of plays a key role in all our parishes developing. And actually, I'm going to stop on that part because it, it, it finished a little bit later. Right now, our cathedral is involved. We realize we have a 100-year-old structure that needs renovation. And we have begun the process this year. And I think we might be able to finish our phase one or we have to finish our phase one this year and then continue on. This structure, we're, we're all committed. The parish is committed, the bishop is committed. And I think a lot of you are also helping us out with this project because this is our historical building. It's our Eparchy home, um, and we hope you, you know, support us. Immigration led to all these people coming here and starting all of our churches, not just St. Nicholas, not your, just the ones that we're talking to, but it's important that we, um, you know, are grateful to them that they left us this and it's very important that we continue supporting our churches thank you thank you glory be to jesus christ Slava Isusu Christu. Welcome to our vibrant parish, Saints Bolivar Olga Church. Laskavo prosimo do našoj živoji parafiji Svete Hulodim Reorgi. Sjogodnje pisle obido. Prosim rosti. Preosvišćeni vladeko, vsečasni, vsečasniši oci, pani matke, dorehi sestri i brate, slava Isusu Christu. Our parish of Saints Volodymyr in Olha was founded in 1968 by Patriarch Yosef Slipe with the special mission of supporting the patriarchal movement as well as the continued renewal of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church as begun by the servant of God, Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky. Over the years, our parish has built a church building in a pure Ukrainian Byzantine style that faces east and has been called an architectural gem in Chicago's crown. We've also built a cultural center from which we are speaking to you today. In the past, our parish has been active in the formation of leaders for our church, which have included fathers Andriy Chirovsky and Petro Belazo. Uh, especially active in all of these efforts were our past pastors, the mitered archpriest, Father Marian Petrinsky, and Father Archimandrite Ivan Krotets. With Ukrainian independence, 
1991, our parish became a spiritual home for especially the fourth wave of immigrants from Ukraine for who it was and remains important to preserve their language and to celebrate on the same liturgical calendar as their family and friends in Ukraine. In the 21st century, our parish continues to be a leader in the Ukrainian community of Chicago and vicinity, continues to provide a spiritual home for those who seek to be united in prayer with Ukraine, and continues in its original mandate of supporting the patriarchal movement and development of our Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church as a whole. Nashu parafiu zasnuval sluha boazhi patriarchio asif tishchu devyet so chizdisyad vosmo muroci i nam dao osoblevi zavdanya dali vidnovljate ukrajinsku greko-katolicku crkvu proces jaki je rozpočal sluha boazhi metropolet Andrej Šeptecki jaki takož pit tremovate patriarkalni ruh. Za ci vsi roke naša parafija zbudovala hram v često ukrajinsko-vizantijskomu stelju, jak i takož vsej kulturni vsredo. V minulom naša parafija bola duže aktivna v formaciji providnikiv glede našoji crkve na Zahal in se je vključala oca Andreja Čerojskoga in oca Petra Galadzu in ki dolj široke in zasnovovali in včele v instituti imene Metropoleta Andreja Šeptejskega, prvša tudi v Šikago, a tudi v Kanadi. V ceh staranjah boli duže videni naši bolši parohi, otec Metrat Marijan Butrinski in otec Arhimandret Ivan Krotec. Z nezaležni si v Ukrajini v 1991 roci naša parafija stala duhovnim domom na četvrti hveli imigrantov z Ukrajini, le je kjeh duže važno zberihati svoju mobu in ločeti se z rodinojo in z druzjami v Ukrajini molitvojo za tem samim liturgijnim kalendarem. V 21. stoliki naša paraf je dali ide vpred, je dali providnikom ukrajinskoje hromade Šikago, podaje duhovni gim glede teh, še hoče izlučiti se molitvojo z Ukrajinojo in prodolži je originalni mandat pri tremke patriarkalnega ruhu, jak je takož rozvinjenja ukrajinskoje hrekokatolickoje crkve na Zahal. Šero ďakujemo. As a lawyer, I respect rules and I think we were the ones who kept to the four-minute rule, pani Mariko. Thank you for your attention. Please now welcome Father Roman Initsky in the parish of the Nativity of the Mother of God in Palos Park, Illinois. Okay, Slava Isusu Christo. I am Father Theodosius Roman Ilnitsky of the Order of St. Basil of the Great, and uh, I am administrator of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary Church in Palos Park. This parish had a humble beginning in the year 1911. Ukrainian Catholic, Catholics living on the south side of Chicago, not having their own church, nor a priest, or a place to worship, would get together for Sundays and major holidays at the Carpathian Ruthenian Chapel or St. Michael Roman Catholic Church. But in 1911, Bishop Soter Artinsky sent Father Michael Prodan to become the first pastor of the spiritual leader of the community, which continued to use the hall of St. Michael's Church until 1912 when they built a modestly small wooden hall on South Paulina Street 
which served as a church. In 1919, a stone, stone and permanent church was built, but as the community moved onto the new, onto the new church, new problems began to arise. Therefore, they had to make a loan. And thanks to this loan, in 1920, they completed the building and had the dedication of the new church. In 1935, a new priest, Father Onofri Kowalski, took over the parish, but due to the Great Recession, the parish could not pay the loan and declared bankrupt in 1937. The church was sold to a Czechoslovakian businessman for $29,000. And with these disastrous events taking place, the year 1937 had a huge impact upon the entire parish and the frightened parishioners turned for help to the Basilian Fathers and the Provincial Superior of the Basilian Fathers agreed to help. And since then, Basilian Fathers are serving in this church. In 1955, the parish built a great school, but in 1975, the changes in the neighborhood and substantial decline in the parish were the main reasons for the closing of the school and making plans for the parish to move out as well. So under the leadership wise and careful planning of the pastor, Father Abraham Miller, in 19, 1993, the parish moved to this new location in Palos Park. At the present time, we have about 110 registered families, and our parish is growing due to the fact that our people started to move in this area. Every Sunday we can notice someone new in our church, not only Ukrainian people, but also Roman Catholics are coming to our church. So with the help of our young and older parishioners, we are trying to keep going to have a, a better future for our parish. Thank you for your, your attention. And the next presenter will be from St. Joseph the Betrothed Parish in Chicago, Father Mikola Boryadnik. Слава Ісусу Христу! Присвященіший владико, сучасніші отці, дорогі брати і сестри, нам надзвичайно приємно вітати вас у нашій парафії і також зустрітися з вами у цьому віртуальному світі. Але сьогодні тут ми є в колі наших отців і нашої парафіальної ради, представників всіх наших парафіальних організацій. We welcome you uh, here in our uh, St. Joseph uh, Ukrainian Catholic Church, St. Joseph the Betrothed Ukrainian Catholic Church, as Father of uh, Blessed Memory, Father uh, Tom Glenn uh, mentioned once, welcoming parish. Uh, we are a very uh, active, vibrant uh, parish on the northwest uh, side of Chicago. If you're landing in O'Hare, you, you can easily see us from uh, the air. And uh, we uh, are unique in, in many ways. Not only our building is 
the church uh, itself is one of the most uh, unique uh, in, uh, churches in the world. You can Google it. And but uh, we, I would like to uh, share something in um, in three ways about our liturgical life, uh, preaching of the word of God, and also our diaconia. Uh, we believe this is the most important things that uh, each parish has to um, has to offer. So um, our liturgical life, we follow two calendars at the same time, originally Gregorian calendar, and with a uh, new immigrants joining us, we are following two calendars at the same time. Eight o'clock liturgy every Sunday is according to Gregorian calendar, 9.30, 11.30 Julian calendar. Uh, we uh, celebrate um, the full, uh, full circle, liturgical circle for both calendars. We are blessed to have um, three choirs, uh, Choir Irmos, uh, and uh, Stavros and the Children's Choir Nadia. Uh, our services are uh, always uh, very organized. We are very blessed to have good cantors, and of course, in these uh, during the liturgies, uh, they are led by our fathers, uh, myself, uh, Father Bogdana Listening, and Father Deacon Marko Krutyak, and. Uh, uh, that's, that's our uh, blessing to have uh, this community um, and a very active liturgical life. The preaching word of God, we uh, have uh, different catechetical groups, which is the first confession preparation class for our children and parents in the same, at the same time. Like the last year we had 75 children uh, who uh, had their first confession classes and then received their first confession and um, also their parents also had the classes. We have our active parish office and the bulletin every week. Uh, we have Ritna Shkola in Metropolita uh, Last year we had 350 children in, this, uh, in, the, in the school. Now we are a little bit uh, over 250, I believe right now, and growing again. Uh, children's Catechism Camp uh, every summer. We have uh, Ukrainian Youth Organization soon we do very open in our parish. We have different groups, Vashivanka Dancing School, Hopag Martial Art, uh, School of Art, Theater, theater Homing, and other uh, groups that are uh, with us. Uh, we are very blessed to have uh, uh, active uh, uh, laity in our parish. Vashimiriani formuje jeden z takich dysno osnovnych widzieli w naszej parafii і які висловлюють не тільки свою молитву про славу Господа, але також діяконію, допомогу потребуючим. The diaconia is very important part of our parish and a sestretство of, of the Покрова Святої Богородиці, Protection of Blessed Virgin Mary, and uh, братство імені uh, Blessed uh, uh, Nikolai Чернецький, uh, with the spirit of St. Joseph, our pioneers to build the church, uh, this is the group that, that forms that not only taking care of our parish and the needs of our parish, but also uh, helping uh, those who are in need. Um, soldiers from Ukraine, uh, we created a Ukrainian Heroes Fund and seven soldiers uh, came to us, uh, got their medical um, treatment here, surgeries, uh, rehabilitation and so forth. And also the sisterhood is very involved in helping orphanages. Every week there is a multiple pack, uh, boxes sending and also support, financial support um, to orphanages in Ukraine. They're very blessed uh, to have our Oktoberfest. And this is what um, shows us as a, as a welcoming parish, something that we host um, around 10,000 people each year. This year we had only virtual, but still with the state, uh, with the taste of St. Joseph. Uh, many other things are um, unique, uh, but we are very uh, blessed to have many people in our parish. Uh, we have around 150 baptisms a year, 30 weddings at least a year, uh, and, um, and growing. So we are, we are very grateful for all the blessings that uh, Lord bestowed on us, and uh, we would like to share also our gifts that we receive from God with the parish in uh, San Diego, St. John the Baptizer, and today we decided um, to, uh, to, to make a gift of love uh, to support parish uh, in San Diego in the amount of $10,000 from our parish.
Thank you. Um, this is the blessings that we enjoy and we'd like uh, everyone to have, to have the space to pray, to have, they already have the church, but the, the, the building will be built uh, if they have the real church. So I would like to thank you for your uh, time and uh, for uh, coming <laughs> and being our guest at the same time uh, through this virtual connection. And uh, uh, now we'd like to invite uh, Father Mikhail Kuzma from the Mekhlet Conception Parish uh, to continue our virtual event. Thank you and God bless. Slava Jesus Christo. Can you hear me? Yes. You can. Well, I would like to invite, first of all, the head of our parish council, Steph Kukurapas, to say a few words. He's been here many, many years, even before I came. I've been here 25 years as pastor, and uh, let me ask Steph to please say a few words. Slava Jesus Christo. On the weekend. I would just like to start off uh, to talk about our church. Uh, you know, the diocese or the eparchy uh, had a visionary many years ago. His name was Father Joseph Sherry. He founded Immaculate Conception. He also founded St. Joseph, which you just heard from, uh, back in the late 50s and the early 1960s. There was a, a tremendous amount of Ukrainians that were immigrating, or not immigrating, but, but moving out from the city of Chicago. And he saw that. Many Ukrainians moved to Palatine and they established their church back in 1963. We've been in existence now for 57 years. The, uh, for many years, the uh, parishioners that we had, we had a steady group up until the 1980s, and these were mostly immigrants that came over after World War II. Then in the late 80s, early 90s, one of our priests decided that it would be a good idea for us to have an English liturgy. We only had one liturgy, and it was in Ukraine at the time, they added a second liturgy and then it was English. And it was, a, at that time, it was a little bit controversial, but it uh, finally accepted and our parish started to grow. We had many uh, Roman Catholics started coming, but we also, it was important to have it in English because our, uh, many of somebody who was a Ukrainian and he marries a non-Ukrainian, we wanted them to join our church and to feel welcome uh, and, and to glorify God. Then uh, for many years, we kind of stayed steady as well, uh, up until about 10 years ago, when we started to see a big immigration from Ukraine. And we knew our church was not big enough for that. Uh, so we started a campaign to build a new church and we build it on the foundation we currently have. Uh, for, so for the last 57 years, actually Father Mikhailo, uh, has been our our priest now for 25 years. You may have seen about a week ago, we had the, the grand opening of Immaculate Conception, our new church. Uh, the bishop blessed it. It was a tremendous event. Uh, we raised a lot of money. We still owe a lot of money. Uh, but with God's grace, uh, we were able to accomplish it. And I'll turn it back over to Father Mikhail. Slava Jesus Christo. Uh, okay. Um, first of all, let me just say that um, I want to congratulate Father Sus and his entire community of St. John the Baptizer, and we support you. Uh, St. Joseph's is amazing. They're a phenomenal parish. They got 10,000. We'll offer you today 1,000, but we'll try to offer more in the future. Right now, we have a debt over $2 million ourselves, so we're in a little bit of need. But uh, with our community here, it truly is dynamic, it's alive, it's energetic. A lot of the um, reason for that, as Stavko mentioned, is the Ukrainian community uh, has grown and grown and grown. People from Ukraine the last 15 years have joined. 80, 85% of our parish are new immigrants from Ukraine. Also, one of the reasons that we're growing here in Palatine is because we have a dynamic Zoom. Uh, we're next door neighbors. We do a lot of things together. Some of you might know we have a Chirvana Ruta festival every summer. We actually uh, have learned a lot and got to give credit to St. Joseph's Parish because we've had a lot of support from them and we learned a lot of things from them. 
Father Yaroslav Mendyuk, who is the associate pastor here, is very good friends with Father Mikola, and he's always coming back every few days. Father Mikola, we got to do this, 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 uh, and many of his ideas come from St. Joseph. Let me say this. Suom takes care of many of the cultural, educational needs of our people. The Ukrainian school there is over, does, is, has over 200 kids, and there's no room. One of the reasons our church was needed as well is they're going to be using space in our church, in our church hall, to expand the school because we've been limited. We have to tell kids, you cannot join. Um, we have also, as St. Joseph's does, two calendars. We have all the services on the old and new calendar. Of course, this is a little bit, in my estimation, schizophrenic, especially around Easter time and Christmas, but we do what we got to do to serve our people. When Patriarch, uh, we started uh, collecting money and coming up with the idea of a new church in 2008. Patriarch uh, Sertoslaw was here in 2011. Bishop Richard Semenak invited him to come to our parish. We were very fortunate because we are a very, very small church. But he blessed the cornerstones of the church we thought we'd start building a year or two later. Well, it's been uh, nine years later when we completed the church. And on those cornerstones is a passage from the Gospel of Mark. This, house, this shall be a house of prayer for all nations. And that precisely is uh, our goal, our vision, at least it's mine, certainly, uh, to be open and receptive, as Father Sus says, to anybody and everybody who comes. Uh, and truly, over the years until the present time, the English liturgy, which Steph mentioned, carried financially this parish uh, forward because they were more professional. The people who built the church uh, 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 were getting elderly and did not have as much financial support or could not provide so much financial support. Patriarch Lubomir, who once mentioned when he was in the States that we are called to be priests, are called to be bilingual, bicultural. And I would say that is precisely what our parish is, bilingual, bicultural. In fact, if there's any group of people that need to or want to uh, uh, come to our church here to uh, be nourished spiritually, we will learn even Spanish or whatever else is necessary. We thank, again, Sum immensely because, as I said, they have uh, youth, youth groups for, you know, uh, camping groups. They have cultural groups. They have patriotic national groups, political groups. And uh, we work hand-in-hand hand very closely. Father Yaroslav Mendyuk, who is the associate, has done a lot in that regard as well. He is the chaplain with Sum, and he is truly very energetic. I'm getting a little bit older. So I'm pushing the spiritual end, and he's taking care of the other things as well. Spiritually, for me, we have, uh, first of all, a very dynamic Ukrainian Bible study group. They're not just a Bible study group. They're immensely um, interested, concerned, desirous of coming to know Jesus more and more and more at a very, very deep level. We have mothers in prayer. We have two pilgrimages a year because we are, have been established by Bishop Richard as the Park Hill a Shrine, uh, Vipustavi Kram. So we have more and more spiritual desires to provide in the future. I have a desire and have for years to have this church open 24-7. But let me read something very quickly and then uh, shortly after I will stop, I promise. The concept of continuous prayer came from St. Paul. You know he said, pray without ceasing. This uh, concept of maintaining prayer unceasingly arose in the church in the first half of the 5th century. At that time, an Eastern monk, his name was Alexander the Akoimitos, having first introduced the practice of continuous prayer, the recitation of Psalms in Mesopotamia, brought this form of prayer to Constantinople where he said to have founded the monastery of Akoimetoi, the monastery of those who do not sleep. The community <clears throat> prayed in eight-hour shifts, 24 hours a day. So, of course, that kind of prayer developed in the Eastern, and especially in the Western Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the idea of all-night vigils is very Eastern, so my concept is all-night and all-day vigils. Now, of course, this is my dream. Will it happen? I don't know. But there are people slowly signing up, for an hour a week to spend time praying, first of all, for the eparchy, the bishop and all the priests and the clergy, for all the people who do not know Christ to come to know him throughout the world, and for the healing of mind, body, soul, and spirit. And those three 
intentions were given to us and agreed upon with Bishop Richard and myself and Michael Pank, who was the head of the building committee at that time. So what I ask of you is only your spiritual support. Two things. If we can be of service, if you have any intentions that you want prayed for, please pass them on to me through our parish website or through the mail or through the phone. Number two, if we can in any way, shape, or form ask you to pray for us so that we can continually develop in a spiritual mode to be that shrine we're called to be, I would thank you very much. Uh, God's blessings upon all of you. We want to thank Bishop Benedict who has supported us constantly and we were very very blessed last week he was here for the consecration of the new church and i want to thank all the priests of our eparchy because they are very very special men the guys in chicago who i know very closely are very very special and maybe i don't know if it was mentioned i came in a few minutes late uh probably will be mentioned later on but i just discovered that one of our priests father james carapin passed away so maybe we'll all be able to say some prayers for him uh, in the days to come. Slava Isusu Christo. Thank you. Thank you very much, all the presenters, gorgeous, beautiful churches, and actually, I have a sincere congratulations to the conception of Immaculate Mother of God Parish as they opened up their newly built church last week. It was a project that required many efforts tremendous dedication on the part of the faithful and clergy, and an incredible vision and leadership of their pastor, Father Michael Kuzma. Something similar to what St. John, the baptized in San Diego, California, is going through right now. Thus, once again, if you would like to support their community, their church that is being built or they plan to build, please do your donation, please share your gift of treasure. And so far, according to the latest update, we have collected around $13,000 for that cause. So thank you so much for your generosity. As we come into an end of our virtual encounter, I would like to invite the last set of parishes that actually stretch all the way from south to north of the eparchy. And there is one parish in particular that is especially close to my heart. Well, you'll see which one. So please, St. Sophia, the Colony, Texas, Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Omaha, Nebraska, St. Joseph at Monster, Indiana, and St. Constantine, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hello, glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. I'm Father Frank Avant. I'm actually retired and uh, had to leave uh, my dearest blessings in my life, uh, Father uh, St. Joseph at Paris, where they make it the best pedal in the whole world and uh, so if you're looking for some good ones go there but I am uh, retired and moved to uh, West, within this eparchy to see many faces not only of this parish St. Sophia, which I'll get to in a minute, but also of our eparchy in general. I was brought into our Ukrainian church, being non-Ukrainian, by my spiritual father, Father Mikhail Kuzma, whom we just heard from. I had an opportunity at that time to also, my family lived in California, and we were parishioners at the St. John the Baptizer there. And then my job at that time later took me down to Dallas where I became a parishioner at St. Sophia, where I am now. And I was here from 2008 to 2011. After that, uh, going to seminary and ordination, I was appointed administrator to St. Joseph in Munster, uh, Indiana, whom we'll hear from soon and also had the opportunity to serve in the rectory uh, as a vice chancellor supporting Father Mikhailo, who was appointed chancellor by Bishop Richard at that time. So my perspective of uh, what we hear today uh, is, is, is different, I think. 
Um, and I'll start with St. Sophia. The parish was founded uh, 20 years ago, the structure that we moved into this structure where we are now. And like many of the challenges that we have heard uh, from the parishes going on, starting off with St. John the Baptizer, um, this parish also had that. But I left in 2011 and came back in 2018, and I can say by God's grace, by God's love and mercy, by the support of many parishioners, and by the wonderful work of Father of Lowell, it's, it's a beautiful parish. It is transformed. It has overcome the divisions and splits and challenges, financial, spiritual, etc. To be a very dynamic parish, we have a hundred families here, and the ages of children uh, are probably from newborn to, I'm guessing, up to a hundred years old, and uh, different backgrounds, different uh, a number of different. Uh, uh, creeds that came in here perhaps have found what Father Mikhailo is trying to do at the parochial level and that is have found a place to worship God. And we owe it, I can say this as a parishioner to Father Pablo who, and his family who have done such a wonderful and selfless uh, work down here. The, the Families that come in here generally have been, uh, you can have uh, to elderly couples to families of five or six, and uh, it is such a joy to look at the pews, to look at the church, and to hear the people praying with all together and then afterwards going, of course, we can't do that still, uh, going to the social aspect of it. It's very, very special. I, I, I can say this without prejudice because I've been to other places that don't have this. And this is the word of hope that I would like to offer to St. John the Baptist. Father Pablo and his family have done a wonderful job here. And he has united the people and the people have gotten behind him. And he has been able to do more and more and more. And we are today such a dynamic, small parish, a hundred families, but it's, it's a beautiful place. And this is what I see can happen at St. John the Baptist. We have a wonderful priest over there as well. Father Yudi is uh, Mr. Energy himself. And we need to support him as an eparchy. And we would like to also continue to pray for and support all of the parishioners. And I ask everybody in that community to throw their support behind it. And last of all, I do also want to give a very special thanks, humble thanks, uh, in the blessing that we have in Bishop Benedict. He has brought in, as been mentioned two or three times in the presentation, new energy, new vision, new directive, supporting his priests to something that would probably be unrecognizable 12 years ago, 14 years ago. And we are blessed as an eparchy to have Bishop Benedict as our bishop. He is wonderful. And we should all continue to pray for him. And we should for sure, where financial possibly support St. John the Baptizer, and of course, all places of prayer for uh, Immaculate Conception in Palatine. Prayer can unite us, and prayer can bring the grace that is evident at St. Sophia. Thank you very much.
Слава Исусу Христу! Чуете меня? Бо я никого не чую. Алло? Чуем, 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 говорю. Тут вас отче. Исусу Христу говорит to be Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, to be here, and this is my first uh, English speech <laughs> because uh, I try to to use uh, my my English. Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, now only ten months here in Omaha, like administrator, uh, and uh, I have another two parishes in uh, Lincoln. Nebraska and uh, St. John, Missouri. Uh, in Omaha, we have uh, uh, 40 Ukrainian families, new, new migration, and uh, 10 uh, uh, families old migration. Is, uh, in Lincoln, we have only uh, maybe seven, eight uh, families, new migration, Ukrainian. And uh, in uh, St. Joe, we have 10 people, and, but uh, we have a lot of Ukrainian people from Kansas City, uh, Kansas City, uh, and uh, maybe, I hope uh, in the future, we will have a new parish in this uh, place. <clears throat> uh, here in Omaha, uh, I try to in first, pray with the people uh, because uh, I think it's very important to learn to pray. And second, I try to have catechism for our child, uh, but uh, the, uh, in Omaha we have only maybe 10 uh, child and in uh, Lincoln, seven, eight. And, uh, uh, I have good friend David. He helped me every day uh, in, during the pray, during the, my liturgical service. And uh, for me, it, uh, and now I try to create uh, this uh, beautiful community because here in Omaha and Lincoln, St. Joe, we have very, very beautiful people. And uh, I hope in future uh, here we will have it. Uh, Three wonderful uh, parishes in uh, our epoch. Uh, maybe David uh, uh, take one word. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus Christ. My name is David Velashin. Uh, I'm a parishioner here in Omaha. Uh, I've been blessed by being a, a concierge for Father Taras, a driver, a translator to our strange American customs, so he can get accustomed to life here. Um, well, uh, like you said, we've been getting uh, which we've been getting a catechism together. Last week, they you know they celebrated their, their first class, you know, with the creation with the creation story and everything, and um, we we hope to grow on that. And um, it, it's it's wonderful seeing all this, you know seeing this big family we have here. One thing big families always have is is a family reunion. Maybe when all this madness gets over, we can all meet halfway somewhere and have a big have a big feast. You know, that'd be wonderful. Um, well, I'll give it back to Father Taras. I love you guys. You guys have a wonderful and blessed, blessed Sunday. Дуже вам дякую за те, що були уважні до нас і особливо до мого. Сподіваюсь, моя англійська була зрозуміла. Дуже вам дякую. Дякую, Марія, за гарне приготування. Thank <laughs> you. 
Greetings from St. Joseph Art Church in Munster. Um, our parish, much like the one in San Diego, started with the efforts of just a few people. Um, by December 14 in 1958, the first liturgy was held. And then they purchased a house to convert into a church. And uh, that was in Hammond, Indiana. And St. Joseph Art Parish became the first Ukrainian Catholic church in Indiana. So that was nice. By 1967, the current church and hall was built, and it, this is in Munster, Indiana, and it continues to be the center of our faith and our church family. We have had 14 pastors over that time, and in the past five years, there's been a few times where twice we've not had a permanent pastor. I didn't say, add this originally, but after seeing everybody, I do want to say it was really a nice experience to be able to meet so many priests over those two times that we didn't have a permanent priest because we got to know more priests from the whole um, area. So it was very nice, really. But now we are happy to have Father Vladimir, and we hope he stays with us a very long time, of course. <laughs> In our history, we've had uh, one of the oldest altar boys. I don't know if anybody else can beat this, but the late Wasil Snowchu would always step in. If there wasn't an altar boy available, he would serve at the altar, even until he was in his 80s. Also, we at St. Joseph, we do understand the struggles of a small parish. Uh, for 35 years or more, we have now been selling paraha almost every week except in the summer and they are the best in the area right everybody <laughs> um, and those uh, sales contribute a major portion to supporting our, our church with the income from that we want to thank the uh, parish of saint john the baptist sir, also for inspiring frank avant to join the ukrainian catholic church because after he was ordained he came here to our church first to be our priest for about a year and everybody was very excited to see him on the screen so thank you father frank for having spent time with us uh, for myself i did want to just mention years ago sometime in the 90s i'm not sure exactly what the street was what church it was i actually was at your parish in san diego and so i feel a little close to you, even though we're far away. Uh, the parish parishioners of St. Joseph uh, are also very grateful to the bishop for giving us this opportunity to help support the small parish to build the church of St. John the Baptizer in, in the San Diego area. And we also want to congratulate the, the bishop on his anniversary of being a bishop. And may he have many, many years of health and long life as our bishop. Thank you. 
Thank you, everyone. As a, of course, as an economic or network, I probably should say a few words about money. Um, we, we are one of the smallest parishes in what our network, but because of the generosity of those these wonderful people, we were able to collect some funds and are pleased to send the check in the amount of three thousand dollars for um, St. John the Baptizer Parish in San Diego, California. Thank you very much. And may the bless St. John the Baptizer Parish and all of our parishes in our network. Я зараз хочу передати слово цю Іваночку Мудюку в Міннеаполіс. Дякую. Слава Ісусу. Well, oh yeah, Otec, okay. Otec, yeah, Otec Shkumbachuk. Well, Otec Perry and a mute, Yana Sancho, Otec Budicini. Yana Svesa, oh, what is it? Slava Isusu Christu. Slava Naviki. Slava Naviki. Slava Naviki. Отець Іванович Кумбатюк, адміністратор парафії Святого Константина. Зараз я знаходжуся в такій екстраординарній обстановці, не так, як мав би бути бенкет. Я знаходжуся, бачимо, ззаді мене є каплиця. І перебуваю для того, щоб послужити в штаті Вісконсин для громади, яка потребує недільної служби. І маю нагоду це зробити, так як є моє покликання. Але про нашу парафію, про наше життя, про нашу історію я хочу запросити до слова пані Христину Єрмихов, яка є активною учасницею життя парафії, яка переживає і творить майбутнє цієї парафії. Тому запрошую пані Христину більше розказати про нас. Дякую. Так, я називаюся Христя Цибрівська Джермігов, і я тут є ще нова, я тільки тут 15 років, so I'm still the new person on, on the block. Але менше з тим, I have a great honor and pleasure to represent St. Constantine, the church that I love, in this beautiful uh, Zoom gathering. They say save the best for last, so I hope you still have enough energy to listen to our little story about a wonderful church we in a parish we have here. First, tell me if you hear me. Okay, yeah, for you. All right, I'll start also with our history. It's very similar to other people's. We started in 1913. I wasn't around at that time, obviously, hopefully. And uh, it was started by Father Konstantin Kurelo and a small group of Ukrainian immigrants. And of course, as more and more immigrants came to Minneapolis area, they needed a larger church. And in 1973, a new church, which is beautiful. I wish I had pictures of it, but a uh, beautiful church was built under Monsignor Stefan Knapp. And so not only was a church built, but a beautiful uh, rectory, a priest house, museum, and also a huge school with classrooms, an auditorium, and a kitchen. And the, that was big, and all built by very hardworking volunteers, generous donor, donors, and a wonderful uh, direction with, uh, through the priests and on beautiful grounds. In fact, we're, we're located right in downtown, well, close to downtown Minneapolis and Northeast Minneapolis. In fact, we had peace marchers walking right in front of our church during one service. So the parish life thrived through the making and selling of Pirohe, which I obviously other parishes are doing, the Ukrainian Saturday school, various bazaars, dinners and church holiday celebrations, all run by volunteers, of course. In 2013, we celebrated our 100th anniversary. As you met our present uh, uh, current pastoral administrator, Father Ivan Shkumbachuk, things have uh, gotten for the better, to the better. He arrived only in May of 2019, but under his leadership, he almost immediately formed two uh, committees, one pastoral and the other one, a financial committee. Both of these have our, our a task to do and because we're made up of people from Ukraine, newly arrives, people who have history in Ukraine where maybe their parents were founders and people like me who were born here, 
then we get along really well and we are very serious about what we need to do. Another uh, group that was formed is the uh, St. Mary's, I'm not, sorry, the Women's League of Mary. And we're very active with fundraisers. We just sent some money for seminarians in Ukraine and we're also raising funds for orphans in Ukraine. But we also have fun activities because we hope we can engage families, which is what we have now and we want to encourage. One example was during COVID, we had, uh, when the COVID started, we had car blessing where you drive up and the priest would bless your car during on Independence Day of Ukraine and everyone got a flag and also you got ice cream. Either you could socialize on the grounds or else drive off. So things like that to encourage families to come. Father Ivan also was clever enough to have a drive-by basket blessing at Easter. So you put your beautiful basket in your trunk, we opened the trunk and he blessed it and off we went. So people, that was very popular, despite COVID was very difficult for all of us. And in September, he did backpack blessing for all students. They brought their backpacks to church and he blessed them. So we're trying to get more people involved in the church with all different kinds of activities. Now, main source of income, of course, is pirohe making. And someone said that they have the best pirohe in the nation. Well we want to challenge that because ours are so good. We have a secret recipe, which even I don't know for the dough, but we even made it on PBS TV. They gave a small segment about the Pirohe at St. Constantine's and we have the Mike Vikings football team coming in for Pirohe. So I don't know if anybody can top that, but right now we're following COVID uh, instructions that we only do takeout and we are very rigid about that. Hopefully we'll go back to normal one day. Now, uh, someone mentioned how, how uh, active Zoom is. Well, we also have Zoom, but right now another plus is that we have a rebirth of PLUST. And we're excited about that because not only do we have a nice group of students or kids, but now we have two people who joined, uh, two signore who joined PLUST, and one of them happens to be Father Ivan. So he's our plus Tove Chaplin, and we're very happy about that. As a side note, we have two celebrities amongst our midst here at, at church. We have, maybe some of you watched the Emmys, but the person who won the Emmys for the best director is Andri Parekh. His parents are very active in our church, and he used to be an altar boy. And also we have Heidi Stephanie Piper, who's flown two space shuttles missions and took five sp spacewalks. That's just a little side note that might be interesting for you. Another good thing about our church that is thriving as well with our new wave of immigrants is that we have a wonderful choir. And our director is Dr. Uh, Yuri Ivan, and he got his doctorate from the University of Minnesota for music. And he elevated our choir up to the point where we have a very nice CD that sold out a couple of times from Yoshan and other, other um, companies, but uh, as I say, we, that uh, we're a good choir now, and we started uh, recording a second CD, but we had to stop because of COVID. But in the meantime, Yuri is also teaching some people uh, some cantering skills. So we want to continue with that tradition. I do Vespers now, and something I've never done in my life before. So now we're also progressing in that way. So one of the best uh, outreach programs we have is what's called the Byzantine Choral Festival. We've held it at our church for 10 years now. We were supposed to do it for number 11, but because of COVID, we couldn't do it. We had to put it on hold. But it's a, a festival, a two-day festival, where choristers from all over the Twin Cities area come for a workshop to learn choral techniques and Byzantine rite music. And then we invite professional and amateur choirs to come and perform at a concert. And it's very well received. There's a lot of publicity on NPR about this and a lot of very special and highly regarded conductors. We sing, we teach these pieces to uh, the general public, the Byzantine Rite music in different languages even. There's Old Slavonic, Ukrainian, Georgian, Greek, Aramaic even and Romanian even. So that is a great outreach because the capacity of our church is almost standing room only. And also we've gotten $22,000 in the past from uh, the state of Minnesota 
to fund this kind of event. So that's a nice outreach program for us. And people are really missing that, uh, that we're not having this um, festival this year, but we plan to continue next year. For our future, we are, uh, we're very optimistic because we have such hardworking and talented volunteers and we have very good leadership. And we see the future is hopeful because we have faith, faith in the Lord. But as all par parishes, or almost all parishes, we are need, in need of financial help to maintain our structure. We have uh, a lot of massive restorations that we need to do. And we want to preserve the structures that we have to update. We have to um, worry about our icons and our beautiful artwork and so forth. So what the father is also doing, we're starting a school for all levels of Ukrainian and all ages whether you're speaking or non-speaking Ukrainians, you're more than welcome uh, to come to this school. Father also started catechism classes for adults, one day in English and one day in Ukrainian. I try to join both if I can to continue my Ukrainian. And also he, the, the liturgies are, li are live streamed. The one that's on Saturday or in English, sung, and on Sunday they're sung as well. Our choir is not the full choir, but we do have a family that that lives together, believe it or not. I call them the Von Traps of St. Constantine, that they sing a beautiful service under the direction of Yuri Ivan. Also, Father sends out wonderful bulletins to everyone. We have a, more than 150 people on our list, families, I should say. So everybody's reaching out and now people are starting to come back more than they had in the past. And we're very much encouraging all people, anyone who wants to pray with us, we're very welcoming. So we want to secure our church, our traditions and heritage for the future. And we hope that God will soon deliver us from this pandemic so we can go back to normalcy. And I just want to thank you for your attention and for please visit our website for more information. Yakuyu. <laughs> Thank you once again to all the presenters. Incredibly beautiful churches, great parishes, great parish communities. And every time I watch those presentations, I cannot help to think how dedicated, how committed those and willing to sacrifice our faithful are. Despite uncertainty of times, despite various financial, administrative, any other challenges, they continue to support their church communities and continue on with their mission of proclaiming the good news to the rest of the world. For this, on behalf of our bishop and all the clergy of the eparchy, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you all for all the good you do. I know it's been a long time since we started our virtual banquet. I guess time flies when you have fun, right? Well, at this time, I want to thank you very much for your participation in this event, for your continuous support of all the eparchial initiatives. Please continue to pray for our eparchy, for our bishop, for our clergy, for all those seeking God, in especially, I just learned this in the last hour, for the repose of the soul of our Father Jim Carapin. As we continue to remain connected with you in a socially distanced way, please think about all the other creative ways to keep our eparchy moving forward. Please also remember to support St. John the Baptizer community as they try to build their new church. You can donate electronically or send a check to the eparchy. Last but not least, thanks for the efforts and time of those who put their virtual banquet, this virtual banquet together, or they were involved in this project in one way or the other. They were tirelessly preparing this event. Once again, thank you for your generosity, for those individuals who donated money, for those parishes who donated money. We collected so far over $15,000. And please, if you're able, please continue to donate, please continue to support all those good projects. As we start everything in life with prayer, we finish everything with prayer as well. Your Excellency Bishop Benedict, would you please be so kind as to lead us in a closing prayer? God bless. Thank you very much for this gathering. It's first but not last. And I think it'd be good when we pray for our father, James Karapin. He passed away today. 
I think he is ready for heaven and God invite him to be with God. Now we pray вечная память. Зі святими у покій Христе Боже душу собшо раба твою як ми се творимо вічною пам'ятю. God bless all of us, all parishioners, our parish, and everybody, now and forever and ever. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I wish I had this more.